Okay, so today I want to talk about Moon conjunct K2. All right, this is still weird for me to get used to looking at this space background myself, but I just got bored and I've got a new computer and I'm experimenting with different things. All right, so today let's talk about the Moon conjunct K2. So K2 is the south node. It is the point, the mathematical point in space where the eclipses occur, K2 and Rahu. These are called the north and south node in Western astrology, but we really have a very rich tradition of working with these nodes in the Vedic tradition. Now, the moon, when the moon or sun is conjunct K2 or Rahu, it's more, it's kind of like more prominent because these are the planets that actually get eclipsed by these lunar nodes. So the moon um, can, the moon when it's with K2 can be very tricky. It, and, and remember that K2 represents like what you've done a lot from past lives. And so if the moon is with K2, you've been a very sensitive, refined person in past lives or a very caring person or very thoughtful, or, you know, perhaps you're very popular, or you had a social connection, the moon rules the masses and being popular and um, social things. Uh, it can usually make one have a very like beautiful, um, if it's an, a good, strong, healthy moon, it can make one have a very beautiful, refined, like very subtle mind, like a the mind of a poet, you know, um, or it can give one a very like refined um, sattvic intelligence, as we might say, a very subtle mind, a very subtle personality, but they can be very uptight mentally and emotionally. And this is where it gets really interesting. K2, wherever it's at in the chart, is where we're going to be very uptight and very rigid. And so when we have Moon and K2 conjunct, one can be emotionally very uh, rigid at times, too rigid. So a lot of times when you're counseling people who have this, or if you have the chart, if you have this in your chart, or you know someone who has this chart, you might notice that these people are very emotionally rigid about something. They can only feel a certain way. They really don't like to feel these other ways. They don't like to have all the notes of the spectrum of emotion. They like to just stay on one note. And this is what's interesting is say that this is the case of an afflicted moon, a very dark waning, shame moon, something like that. They'll actually hold on to those painful, bad feelings as their one note kind of thing. So to put it another way, this makes one get kind of very uptight and very fixated on a certain emotional wavelength, a certain state of being. So this can be what you see in the classic uh, cases where, okay, you know, someone who grew up with a mother that always was, you know, you're not good enough, you're worthless, you're, you're never gonna be anything, you, you should be sad and feel bad and miserable about how worthless you are. You, you have Moon and K2, you grow up with that, no matter what you do, you still feel like I'm really worthless, you know what I mean? And when people want you to feel, when people make you feel worthwhile, it actually makes you uncomfortable and you'll eventually resist those relationships, you see? And so this is where we get into why Jyotish is so beautiful for counseling and healing across the board, uh, because it really helps us understand that everything is coming down to our mind and our personality and our karma and our impressions. So these people, um, this is like, again, this is a great, this is a placement that you'll see a lot of yogis will have this placement because the moon is with Ketu. So they've been very lunar and very refined and internalized for many lives. But you'll notice that again, they're very, very like stuck or rigid or uptight about certain things and or about feeling certain ways. I have so many friends with this placement, you guys, because I don't know, I guess like a moon K2 person would think someone like me is cool growing up or, you know, cause I'm, I'm very lunar person. Um, like my a girl, one girl I dated for like five years has this placement. One of my best friends has this placement. Um, another good spiritual, really good spiritual friend of mine has this placement. I can think of a few others as well. Um, so I know a lot of guys that are very spiritual, like renunciate type people. One of these guys I know is an absolute monk um, and he has this placement. But whenever I talk to him, he's always just like so happy, so exuberantly happy. But it just seems kind of like not that real, because if you're not willing to experience and express and go through all the different spectrum of emotions, 
then you're kind of missing out on something in life. You know what I mean? You're kind of missing out on life on this earth. So there are some yogis who are like very, very advanced who have this and they will be a different consideration. Like for example, Ramana Maharshi has this placement. Once again, someone who just was so rigid and uptight mentally that it actually worked for him and got him enlightened. <clears throat> and his moon was in cancer, very, very strong. And he was born on an eclipse. So he's a very good, like positive example of this placement. But you could see if someone just wasn't that sincere about spiritual growth, they might just use this moon K2 thing to get stuck in a certain like, I'm always blissful or I'm always spiritual. I always am just happy when they're actually trying to run from certain things or, or suppress other ever anything else that they feel that isn't that they will try to suppress basically. Does that make sense? So if you are in, if you're, you know, working with people on a deep, like medical healing um, disease level, this can be at the, at the core of, of the pathology of the individual um, is this type of uh, impression in the mind. So it can be very cold emotionally or very rigid at times and has a very hard time expressing their emotions in general other the ones that aren't that one note that they're very comfortable with and they can be very discontented with a lot of the worldly things in life and they just are like not they're just not that like that ready to really they just they aren't keen to enjoy the worldly pleasures of life you could basically say like um they have more of a deep and k2-like mentality and a more probing and an internalized mentality um and they can be easy to get along with because they're very emotionally controlled. So they don't feel bad. They might not even tell you it, right? Or they might not even express it. But as a result, they have a hard time connecting to people like at least in the deepest levels and their deepest emotions are always being held like in reserve basically. And that's painful. That's a painful existence. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, Ramana Maharshi, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had this, Ra Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, Nikola Tesla had this, you know, Emerson was a big poet, you know, Emerson uh, would actually meet with other people uh, like Walt Whitman and Henry David Thoreau and other intelligent people of his time and gather and secretly they would read the Bhagavad Gita together and meditate together. A lot of people still don't know that, but they would do that in secret back in those days because it wasn't uh, popular. Um, but then other examples of people that have this, um, Nikola Tesla has this, he was very uptight and rigid and, you know, uh, he had a, even he had this like disgusting phobia of fat people or, and he, he was really grossed out by obesity or even um, women that were, were pearls, you know, the moon. Um, pearls are ruled by the moon. He has Mercury as his Atmakarika, which sees the moon as its enemy. Um, he actually would sent a woman home from work one day, one of his employees, because she was wearing pearls and it disgusted him. <laughs> so he had a very uh, probing, internalized mind, but in some ways, very beautiful mind, but at the same time, very suppressed. Um, Donald Trump is another example of a Moon K2 person who's very one note. You know what I mean? Like when you listen to him, um, he's you know, like you're not going to see a lot of other musical notes coming from him um, in the sense of like, emotions and all. Um, Ted Bundy had this. Uh, you can become, you know, this is, uh, if there's a lot of other placements, then it can lead to mental issues. Um, Brad Pitt has this in a stronger placement. You know, um, he's not a guy who we really know much about his feelings or his emotions, really, for how famous he is. Um, so yeah, the moon with K2 is very, very interesting. These people, another really interesting thing is that like, um, like they will just disappear for a long time. Like you won't hear from them about, you know, they'll be doing one thing, you'll be hearing from them a lot, then you won't hear from them for like six months because their moon is in working through all these things internally and they'll just make this big shift without expressing it to anyone without really sharing it to even their closest friends or their girlfriend or boyfriend or something. And so that's kind of a, a problem that can create a lot of problems in relationships. Um, but anything different from that one note that they want to experience, they will just be shutting out. And so if you're on that note, you'll notice them just check out like my best buddy, who's a spiritual friend. As soon as I talk about stuff, that's not 
one of his like three things he likes to talk about he, he's gone his eyes are glassy i can tell he's not even there and i mean he will it's so it's so weird because he'll ask me questions like he doesn't know that i know but he'll be like oh yeah and and then what do you and what happens with that and i can tell he's not curious about it he doesn't want to know the answer to it he's like just trying to keep me talking and then i feel like okay i don't want to talk anymore you know what i mean because you're not really even here you're not really even engaged you're just like kind of playing a conversation program in the back of your mind while your mind is somewhere else. Um, so that can be something that's like ends up people not wanting to talk to that person as much anymore. And then they wonder why they feel so alone. It's because they aren't really expressing and connecting fully when they're with people. Um, <clears throat> so they can also like slip into a deep despair. But of course, not tell anybody about it and keep it super internal and private because if they expressed it, it would only create, it would only bring out all, more of all these feelings that are not part of the one note that they wanted to feel. Um, and so, yeah, you'll see them just like make what seem like really surprising and dramatic changes in life. Um, but to them, they've been working, processing it the whole time. It just seems like that from us, from the outside. Um, <clears throat> And there's really, yeah, like uh, my teacher says, there's really no stopping the crisis of a moon K2 person. When they start to really go through these crises and make these big shifts internally, they do it very hard, very strongly, and they're, um, they don't want to share or talk about it or express much about it. Um, but they, they, if you have this placement, you really got to work on not hiding your emotions so much and not, not suppressing them because eventually you just break down if you do that too much. And when you do, it's a huge emotional breakdown. So you don't want that. Um, these people build up big things in their life and then suddenly do them, but they make people feel really left out of their lives because they don't even share it with their best friends, say, until it's done. Like my friend, he went to India back in the day, but he never like, it was like, like I wanted to go too, but he just started doing it all on his own and just did it. And before he knew it, he was there and it was like, oh, all right, well, have fun there. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like, ah, I thought we were going to like, you know, like talk about what we want to do and express a lot of feelings the whole way. So um, they have to share more of what they're really feeling and express that first feeling, not the second or the third, which they think might be more acceptable. They need to just ah, let out that visceral emotion. And um you know, just not be uptight about it. And that's like the kind of the best way to make things work with this placement. It can take a, it can take a lot of time. Um, you know, like I, I know of another male, uh, a guy who I did a reading for, he was like a therapist and a client guy. And uh, he had this placement. And no matter what I said, the entire reading, he was just keep, he would just keep turning it back to, oh, right. Yeah. Like, you know, I would tell him like, yeah, you're a little emotionally uptight and, and or, you know, I would say, it, I forget how I said it, but you know, there, there's some of this in the chart and he was like, oh yeah, totally. Like, I'm always telling my clients they need to be less emotionally uptight, but he didn't say anything about himself. He didn't, you know what I mean? He didn't actually open up in that state. He just bounced it back onto his clients who need to open up. And that kept him from working on himself. Basically the entire hour, he was basically just dodging, uh, really having to, actually think about what I was saying in the context of him he was just like reflecting it back to other people that have that issue so you can you know there's there's a lot of that stuff going on but at the same time you can have really great you know spiritual capacity really great spiritual possibilities that can come forth from this because it means that someone has really developed their moon in past lives their sensitivity their emotional life their inner life but you got to do whatever Rahu is saying in the chart. And that's going to be different for each person who has this. But they will have to go into that. They will feel frustrated in their internal lunar realm of their emotions until they go into the Rahu jungle. And where, what that is, you know, you have to, again, that's going to be different for each person. But I hope this, I hope this is a good example. Um, or I hope this gives you guys some, some good thoughts. Uh, if you have any you know, any cases of moon K2 stuff, uh, feel free to share it. Let me know. Um, let me know your thoughts and feedback. All right. Thanks, you guys.